can someone help me find my marbles? Because I think I've lost them <laughs> with the new s Plast kit. Fellas, Booyah Bomb has finally breached containment. After a year of not being put onto any new kits, the s Blast 91, like 1991, it has the purple color scheme, is here to finally end Booyah Bomb's disappearance streak. The last two weapons that got Booyah Bomb were the Aerospray RG and the Forge Splattershot Pro, which feels like ages ago. This weapon is going to be stupid fun. The combo potential is so real. I mean, it's got Burst Bomb. What, 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 what else are you going to do? You can reach people from far away. You can reach people up close. It's what this weapon already does, but now you've got it on the sub weapon as well. Sadly, the poor Reflux was sacrificed for this to happen. Literally, because it took the Reef Slider away from the S-Blast so we could have something else. Because it's the Reef Slider on the Reflux. I uh, gag 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 gag. <laughs> Looking at these two kits back to back is so unfortunate when you think about how good the first kit is synergy-wise for the Reflux. The movement that you get out of the Curling Bomb, seeing as the weapon has a hold charge. The missiles providing such good consistent chip damage and tracking. And uh, then you got this one. If they buff the main weapon, it could be a menace with that wall to be able to hide behind, but they gotta do something to it. Otherwise, I feel like the first kit just generally does better. There will be very niche, like, map and mode combinations. I mean, like, any Reef Slider weapon automatically is, like, three times better in splat zones, but after you fire that Reef Slider, a lot of the time you end up getting splatted, and the Reflux doesn't have too much to work with. You can combo very easily with it, but it's not going to be a consistent thing that people are going to be able to pull off, especially with how pinpoint you have to be when using the reflux. I'll be so real. When it comes to the S-Blast, I wanted to enjoy the original kit, but I just couldn't because the kit left so much, for me at least, to be desired. The new one, though? Man, that's a booyah bomb going on to a weapon with a quick low damage sub weapon and a slower main weapon with a large explosive area of effect never seen that one before it's machine it's sloshing machine do you think that maybe this will be the patch where <laughs> machine comes back down to 210 points for special you know since it's still the only weapon in the game at 220 it's it's fine it's whatever i am curious how much points per special they're gonna give to the s blast Booyah Bomb doesn't go on to a lot of weapons, probably for good reason. It's a really good displacement special. You cannot stay where you are if the Booyah Bomb is there. You can throw it underneath ledges to catch chargers. You can throw it at ledges to catch people who want to jump off. You can catch people on the tower and force them to get off without you even having to go over there. It's called GG Booyah for a reason. <laughs> I, I will be playing the Sloshing Machine in Disguise Blaster. If they make the points for special too high, though, it's going to be very difficult to consistently get to that Booyah Bomb. The original S-Blast has the Sprinkler, and as much as people love to clown on it, and I do too, the Sprinkler allows you to actually reach that Reef Slider decently consistently. If it's anything over 200p, it's going to be really hard to utilize that Booyah Bomb in times where you really need it. We don't know too much about what they've done with Bluefin Depot, nor have we seen much footage of the brand new Ramen Shop map, but they both clearly have a fair amount of mobility options and alternate platforms to stand on. What better than something like a blaster with relatively long range to tap away at anyone that dares to get too close? We see the S-Blast do this in the trailer to the... to the new Reflux in, in the trailer. <laughs> I'm hoping that because we got one good blaster kit, that means we can manifest a good kit for the other one. The Custom Blaster's first kit is much more of a defensive setup between its auto bomb and the bubbler to keep it safe. If we want to give it firepower and kind of a copy kit from a previous Splatoon game, why not give it Baller 2? <laughs> I'm talking Crab Tank. It should get Crab Tank. Did you know that no weapon has gotten Crab Tank since release? I think that S-Blast with Crab Tank would have been awesome. It has a bit more range than regular Blaster, which would mean that it wouldn't have to back up as much to really take full advantage of the Crab Tank's reach. But now that we've only got regular Blaster to work with and range, uh, we should give it to regular Blaster. Because I think manifesting anything <laughs> for a ranged Blaster that isn't Kraken will make the range enjoyers out there really sad. 
we can have a lot of really good blaster kits if things go right from here on out. They have given some good kits this season, like the Snipe Rider one that I talked about already, which is just the backline kit ever with Splash Wall and Ink Storm. I'm planning to play Snipe Rider all the way to S Plus on an alt account a bit after the season hits, and I'll stream the whole thing, so I'll probably end up using both the Snipe Riders for that full Snipe Rider experience. Woohoo! And you also know what's right around the corner? Um, a 56 hour long spawning grounds rotation to truly test your patience until big run hits. <laughs> Most people are pretty lukewarm about spawning grounds at best, but it's a great time to try and get a high executive VP badge with some friends given the extra time. If you live in like an NA time zone, you'll get to play basically three different days. And the weapons aren't that bad, given how much time you have to spend on the greats. The Luna Blaster, the Mini Splatling, the Big Swig, and the Tri Stringer is a pretty good combination. There will be a lot of pressure on the Mini player to keep paint down though. Big Run is gonna be on the first weekend after the season starts. If you live in NA, literally on December 1st at 7pm EST. So you get 24 hours from when the catalog begins before the game goes full Big Run mode. And I love that, because I like Big Run a lot and I missed it. The little trophy is, is an egg. I will be grinding this for the golden egg trophy. It's like a necessity. The chill season will definitely get off to a strong start because Big Run's happening right away. We're getting at minimum nine new kits. I mean, if you wanna, if you wanna surprise us with a 10th kit on Monday Nintendo, I mean, you can. And during Big Run, we get to see the new Salmon Run boss, you know? Joe Mama. He's so silly. I, I want to fight Joe and get my Joe badge. Megalodontia? I, I don't know her. He's Joe. And I will be getting at least the 10 kill badge during Big Run. I, I got close for Boris. I don't remember if I got it during the first Big Run, but I got close. I I'm getting it for Joe, hopefully. There hasn't been a new Big Run boss since Horroboros came out in March of 2023, which was nine months ago almost. But that's the same time also we got pools which I feel like will really make people want to play Salmon Run. If you have friends who don't play the mode very much, this big run might be one of the greatest opportunities you have in your arsenal to show your friends the best of Salmon Run and get more people interested in it again. And while the season draws to a close, if you're not done with your catalog yet, there's a bigger incentive than ever because they've given it a 1.5 times bonus. That means you can get a level up from just five games of Turf War if you win them all. One win is 2,100 points, and one loss would be about 1,200 points. Every level up in the catalog is 9,500 points. Meaning that honestly, if you can only go three, three wins and losses in Turf War, you're still getting a level up every six games. The pressure is off. <laughs> the catalog for this season does have a lot of duplicate clothes in the second half, but it also has exclusive locker items like Deep Cuts TV and a glowing sign at levels 67 and 98, or a Splatfest float head at 82. If you didn't feel like doing the second half, now's a, now's a good time to do it. You could, if you're watching this before the season ends, you literally can go and do what I'm talking about right now. It does feel like chill season could end up relatively light beyond this, given that side order is still a development team's main priority, and we don't have confirmation of Frosty Fest yet, although it's very likely to happen. If between now and when the update hits, we can get a few good balance changes and more kits like the S-Blast, I feel like people will definitely be able to continue enjoying playing the game. I mean, I do already, but I know it's not the same for everybody. Splatoon 3 has come a long way from when it first released, and I feel like it can still reach a majority of the potential that people expect from it. The last handful of maps, as well as Mahi Mahi Resort's reworking, have restored my faith personally that we can get some better maps in the game, even if there's no guarantee the ones we have will all be altered. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a great chill season when it gets here. Buh bye bye